Hi, welcome to Simcha, a celebration of life. I am your host, Eitan Berger. World acclaimed Israeli artist Yoram Ranan recently held an exhibition of his work at the Hechal Shlomo Jewish Heritage Center in Jerusalem. His colorful paintings depict the vibrancy of Jewish culture and history, often in abstract form. Using a fusion of techniques, styles, mediums, and book covers, he has created layers of images that the viewer may translate into a plethora of ideas and stories. My first thought of the exhibition was when I saw the space, which is the, the main foyer here. It's so large and imposing, and the ceilings are so high. So I thought that if I put out very large paintings to sort of unify the space together, that I would feel comfortable showing here. So I took my largest, most powerful paintings. There's, all, there's eight walls, and I put, you know, put them in a way where they all speak to each other. And uh, I think it came off successfully. They all seem to hold their own ground and also help each other, show each other off to their best advantage. In this room um, is a group of collages. Whether they're pasted book covers. I painted on book covers that were then pasted on top of paintings. So they have a few different levels to them. Jews have always had a connection to their holy books, and perhaps it's one of the main secrets of our survival over the centuries. And books have always had beautiful covers with, you know, embossings and engravements, and they were hand painted. And then even when, you know, the printing presses came out with um, manufactured book covers, they were still beautiful. So we do have a tradition of the covers of our books, which are like gateways to what's to what, to the wisdom that is hidden within as being something um, beautiful and special with engraving and embossings. And I think that what Yoram has done by using, you know, the embossing and the engraving and the words and the letters of taking the, our ancient symbol and giving it a whole new contemporary look um, is very innovative. And um, you'll notice that some of these are painted on Talmud Bavli book covers. And Talmud Bavli goes back, actually, to the beginning after the temple was destroyed. It was the, really the beginning uh, of our history of written books. And here he's taken this ancient symbol and given it a whole new contemporary, contemporary look to it. Originally, I started painting on, on uh, book covers about 20 years ago when I self-published a book. I was in the bindery and there was a pile of old book covers that were large book covers. And uh, I thought I could use the back of them as supports for painting, like painting on the board. But when I got them in the studio, I started just to mix some paint on the front cover and all of a sudden they, they came alive. The letters of the book and the gold embossing and the patterns there, I found very exciting the play between the sort of stayed book cover and this new fresh paint on there and the contradiction of the modern and the, and the old, the formal and the informal. For me, Jewish art is an inspiration. I love Jewish art and through Jewish art, I feel my connection to Hashem deepens and I can see the world in a different dimension. So the first time I saw Yoram Ranan's work was actually in a Jewish meditation class in a beautiful place called the Shalev Center in Jerusalem. And a very big painting, very similar to this one behind me was shown there. And as I was hearing this wonderful um, lecture about Jewish meditation and the deep meanings of it, and I was looking at this painting, I was so drawn in. I felt a journey in time and space. And I was taken to these spiritual heavenly uh, quarters and I just felt so, so, so inspired. And I said, I have to find who this artist is. What I love especially about his work is that his work is talking at the same time in the contemporary international art language and in the Jewish art language. And the combination of these two is so amazing and powerful. I feel that I'm sort of uh, tapping into a collective consciousness, a national superconscious that I feel that I'm 
not quite channeling, but getting in touch with and trying to reveal and expose. The subjects of Ranan's works are taken from Jewish tradition. He uses the books of the Torah as a guide of how to live life and not just as history books. His paintings create a bridge between the past and the future, the individual and the community, and between the physical and the spiritual. Books have always been gateways to wisdom and to understanding, and this is called Heaven's Gateway. And it, just as in the past, our holy books have been openings and gateways to wisdom, they continue to be for us today. So I think it you know, has a message for us here now today also. This original was uh, one side, one, the front cover, book cover, and I painted on that. And I had it, I have a collection of paintings that I'm not always finished and put aside. And I had another book cover that I painted on. And for some reason, I decided to paste this original one onto the second book cover. And it floats in front of it. So it has an extra sense of depth. You have the original painting, this painting behind it, and it's hovering in front. So it's different dimensions. And then I did another painting, the background painting on canvas, which is, you know, um, was an abstract painting that actually wasn't, in my opinion, very successful in and of itself. And one day I just laid this collage on top of that and I saw how there was an echo of the gateway in the first one with the painting in the background. So we have these process of going through a gate into hopefully higher consciousness, higher realization. I think it also has a bit of a um, sort of a heavenly feel to it very spiritual windows and gateways and archways, and that seems to be what's going on for me in it, at least. What I love about Yoram Ranan's work is that he does action painting. That's actually the, the art that I love most, that the artist actually lets the work happen. He lets the process happen. He pours the color onto the canvas, and he moves with his arms and with the paintbrushes all around. He picks up the canvases, and he just lets the, lets the color play on the canvas itself. And after that, he does a long process of contemplation. He looks at the tries to listen to the work itself to see what it has to say to him, to his deep subconsciousness. And what is amazing for me in Yoram's works is that he connects, I think, not only to his individual subconsciousness, but to the actual global Jewish subconsciousness with these amazing topics that actually live in our sphere of mind of all of us somewhere there in the background and he brings it to life. One of the women that visited here the, in the um, opening of the exhibition, she said it is unbelievable that one artist, that one man created so much spiritual energy. Well, we have a, a shared history. We have, a, we have a shared destiny. We have a shared uh, lifestyle. So we connect in that way. We are our, our, our mitzvot. We you know we share our you know every week in the you know the Knesset we read the Parsha Shavuot. So we're constantly in touch with our our peoplehood and our you know what our role is in the world. And there's the artistic, appreciative, sens sensual side to it, but there's also the, uh, the intellectual and the spiritual side as well. So I hope to activate that in the in the viewer pretty much. Well, what I like about this one, actually, is that it, um, the way the paint was put on, the embossing of the actual painting gives it a lot of depth, gives a lot of feeling of form and uh, solidity. So it feels, has like the walls of Bavel, so it's of, of Babylon. And then you, it's, you know, has the writing in it. It has the, uh, so it looks like almost like a, a safer Torah here, the top of the walls. And there's a very strong heaviness to this very earthy quality of the walls. And then, and then again, it's, it, it's like floating in space. So I, 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 I like the contradiction. I like the juxtaposition. I like the, the two-sided nature. And I think, you know, life is that way for the human being. The human being is a very earthy, grounded, physical being. And then we have this spiritual 
side to us that is not, you know, there's not, nothing you can really touch. It's something that we soar in our thoughts and our feelings and our, in our souls. So I, I think that's something that's resonating in people when they see the paintings. When I'm painting, I don't have these ideas in mind, that these come out through the process of the painting itself. I didn't have a Sefer Torah in mind. I didn't have walls in mind. I didn't, it just comes through from, I guess, a very deep spiritual source. And you, you mentioned humility before, and I think that's the key to the ability to, to be able to convey these, these images, is that because I'm able to, like, negate myself, my ego, and just allow my creative uh, energy to receive, then these things can, can flow through me without my imposing my own will. I can just sort of guide it along and allow it to manifest itself in the paint and, and the surface of painting. Sadly, we've come to the end of this week's episode of Simcheb. As always, it's been a pleasure having you join us. If you'd like to catch up on any of the previous week's episodes, please log on to our website, www.spiritsister.co.za, to find them. From myself, Eitan Berger, and all of us here at Simcheb, have a great week and goodbye. <laughs>